いきますよいいですかはい321ラグビーラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブラブ This is the Rugby Oz, where an unlikely pundit panel of a wordsmith, a WWE legend, a rugby star, and a supermodel scour the globe, seeking best bets and bad behavior. Are you not entertained? Well, thank you, thank you. It must be the college shirt and the great picks. That's right, and if you look at the sponsor opportunity green room, you'll see WWE Hall of Famer John Bradshaw Layfield turned rugby advocate and his sidekick King Gifte Beilu once again coming onto the program, helping make some great picks. And if you look at the your company name here slate, you'll see that we have a full slate. And again, we're welcoming in George Hook. Let's not waste any more time. Let's bring in John and Gift. Gentlemen, a, a pretty good week. We were 39 and 21 collectively, each of us 13 and 7. And as a result, for the first time in the history of this program, and this is season four, episode two, we don't have a wooden spoon. Well, that's because it belongs to the Saracens, as their whole team empire is just falling apart bit by bit. They said, we are losing everyone. We can't pay Morrow. We're losing in the barrel. Our coaches are even differentiating. Yo, that's a wooden spoon owner right there. There you have it. Wooden spoon goes to Saracens. Wooden spoon goes to Saracens. <laughs> hey, and Saracens, I thought that for sure they'd win last week. I thought that was one of the, my favorite bets, and they did not. It could be right that King and Baylor has mentioned they have a few problems internally. All right, this is kind of organic. This is this is exciting. Maybe maybe we have a walk of shame. Hey, I have a walk of shame, but I hate to give it to the young kid because he looked like he was heartbroken. But the kicker for sharks, if anybody knows the walk of shame, that and that poor kid oh, he pulled his jersey yeah. up over his face. He looked like he was crying. And I don't blame. It meant a lot to him. I, I hate it for him. But that Edsabeth makes yeah. the play of the year. You know, year's pretty young. Come up <laughs> last year too. When he rides the ball's free, gets that ball. That was a magnificent play. That that Edson Beth, what a player he is. That's the tall hog at the trough. Is that what that man is? Unfortunately, the, the kick got missed. You got to get him when he retires, when he hangs up the cleats. You got to get him in the WWE. He's made for it. I mean, he's what a big tough guy, and he's smart. I mean, just he's just a great. He was in every single action that you had with the Sharks and the Lions. He would be the first smart. WWE wrestler. Yeah, yeah, I would tell The Rock that, okay? Yeah, well, you Brent, I'll tell him. I'll tell him right uh, yeah. to his face. You, you come up to, like, his navel. It doesn't, it doesn't count if you're it. talking to a cardboard cutout, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You'd have to get on a stepladder. Let's move along with the program again. Hey, Third how night. about the try of the week with Grant Williams? Oh, same game. Same game. Yep. My Bippy and Fosse, and they had that one great try. Those guys are studs. But Grant Williams, that try in the corner was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, that, that kid is – what an athletic move that is. I'm telling you, the South African rugby is fun to watch. It's a different style of rugby. It's different. That – That URC match, the lone URC match of the weekend, was. Wait a minute! South What were we just talking about? We were cost us all the money. Match, and you're going, hey, look, guys, let's get back to the program, and you got to go back to your script because you're so freaking channeled in because you don't have the ability to multitask. Again, I have let's to follow the, the teleprompter. URC game. Just We've been talking about that for 15 minutes. I'm talking about the same match because it was the only match in the URC, but we all lost money on it, and that's the point about it for this show. We all lost money on the Sharks because we thought they were going to destroy the Lions. And what the Lions do? They won! I think we kind of went over that about 15 minutes ago. Japan's Rugby League won. We all saw different things. John, what did you see in Japan Rugby League won? My Kanetsu liners are just as bad as they were last year. They're, they got issues. They bring a player in. He makes a little bit of difference, keeps them in Division One, and then he gets the yellow card, and they give up like 34 tries. Unfortunately, there might be a new Kanetsu liners, and that might be the Honda Heat because they got their <laughs> handed to them. They let up a mere 62 points. Gift? Best watch I've seen, Toyota Verblitz. 
like the player, the wing of Bilami to a Draki. I am now a minor fan of Toyota Verblitz simply because of this one guy. And I'm looking at them to absolutely put a blitz free over uh, the K- Kentetsu liners. Uh, Cause you know, you know, they're the, the stomping grounds of the league. So, you know, how they managed to stay in division one is beyond me, but <laughs> kudos. Well, but because of Quade Cooper. And the right promotion relegation matches last year. The team that came up is the Honda Heat, and they're going to get their kicked against the Brave Lupus. And when the Honda Heat play the Liners, that's your wooden spoon bowl. I do got to say, though, you know, after watching these games, I do wonder if Japan League One and Top 14 are actually better than Premiership. I got to ask George about this because I'm curious. All right, Ooh. and there's your cliffhanger as we welcome in George. What a wow, oh, amazing. George Cook, yeah. <laughs> George, you feeling any better than you were last week? No, I mean, I don't have COVID because I tested, and I don't have the flu. I'm just sick. And in talking to half the Irish population, they're all sick too. And this thing just goes on for a couple of weeks and you feel pretty crap and you cough and you sneeze and all the usual stuff and you feel lousy. If you guys hadn't wasted so much money going to the moon, you (laughs) might have found a cure for the common cold. (laughs) That moonshot was seriously like the fall of the empire. That was it. There's no money in healing people, but man, that moon rock. <laughs> if indeed it was real. It's like Team USA beating Scotland, and then they've, they've just downhill since. And gents, hold that thought for one second. We got to take a break. We'll be right back with George Huck. Need a great price on a new vehicle? Sheehy makes it easy. Easy Price shows you our lowest prices on the Mid-Atlantic's largest selection. Find your best price online or at any of our 31 dealerships. It's easy at Sheehy. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle, on West 36th Street. And we're back with George Hook. George, you're not feeling well. We appreciate you coming on. I mean, being at home makes a difference. I think we all know that. Although I was obviously in the tender, loving care of my youngest daughter in London. It's still not the same. Does she give you better treatment than your wife, Ingrid? The women in my family give me a pretty awful time, generally speaking, (laughs) you know? Uh, They treat their 82-year-old father and husband with a lot of disrespect. Now, when you consider the kind of crap I have to suffer on this program, when I suggest that my my daughters and my wife are actually worse than this, listeners and watchers will get a pretty shrewd idea of what life is for poor old George. If I don't say, yive all, mein commandant, uh, immediately I'm dead in the water. All right, speaking of dead and water, John, you got a question for George? Of course I do. And if it's something fatal, please give it to Matt because we, we, we'll miss you, George. Matt, not so much. The question I have is, George, in every single sport, no matter what it is, they always talk about rest versus rust. Do you rest your key players? How does that affect them? Is it better to play them the whole way, risk the injury? Teams get hot. Sometimes they get on a roll. You've coached on every level from uh, lowest to the highest. What is your take on rest versus rust and resting players before big games? My generation of coaches didn't have that as a problem because the amateur game was totally different. But if you look at the professional game, different countries have different attitudes to rest. So if we look at France and we look at England, if you're Owen Farrell or Uh, Finn Russell, your club wants you next week, even though you've beaten your brains out in the Six Nations, for argument's sake. And the French have consistently used players on their club team in the intervening weeks in the Six Nations Championship. Now, Ireland, who, I mean, I I, I know I'm boring everybody to death, but, but it's a fact. We've got it right We in Ireland have a really good rest situation. And it's why our players, I think, last longer. I mean, it's incredible that England's fly half and captain 
says to the coach, I'm not playing international rugby anymore. Cheerio. And then a fortnight later, he says, hey, coach, I'm going for a big box in Paris with uh, Racing 92. So there's a complete difference in approach. The English and French players are looking out for themselves because they have a shorter time span. The result of that is injury. So even when our fabulous system in Ireland, Mac Hansen, the outstanding wing in the Six Nations Championship, gone for the entire tournament. His possible replacement, Jimmy O'Brien, gone for the entire tournament. What do you think about the time that guys like Ty Furlong or Peter O'Mahony need to get ready for the Six Nations? Do they need to play in these Investec Cup matches? Yes, they do, because... They're needed. Munster, Ulster, and Connacht are in effect at the bottom or the bottom half of their pools, which means that's going to be very, very difficult for them to come through. So Munster aren't going to say to Peter Romani or Furlong, have have another week's rest, Chief. Uh, Not really worried about winning next week against the dastardly French. Like the French are having a good tournament. If they're doing well, they're interested. And then at the first sign of they're not involved, the top 14 becomes the key issue. But like this weekend, I mean, I'll be glued to the telly. Yeah. I've got a bit of a problem. Doris Day is on the other channel. So <laughs> I've, I've got a bit of a clash. But I think I will watch La Rochelle against Lister in France. Do you feel like Premier Rugby, Premiership Rugby is actually a better product? Or do you think, like we're seeing with Owen Farrell, you talk about players going over the other side. You're seeing the other two leagues now starting to surpass what they were able to do. The Premiership is a failed product. Witness some television uh, uh, stations have now dropped the Premiership playoffs and so on because it isn't attractive. It's not a good product. It's also a fairly average standard, as we discover when they then move in to meeting Irish teams or French teams or even South African teams. George, the English teams have fared fairly well in the Investec Champions Cup so far this campaign. So far, but I don't think you're going to see too many of them make the playoffs. The French, for me, are in their strongest position that I've seen them for a long time. And Ireland actually are in their weakest. I mean, we could finish up in the playoffs with just one team, Leinster. And then we're also looking at an absolute exodus of players yeah. from England following the money and from Ireland. Joey Carberry, 37 times capped for Ireland, is not going to be playing for Munster next year. And there's only one position that we have to worry about in the Six Nations Championship, number 10. And who is it? We don't know. Do you feel like it, it? it's an impact on the players then? Do you feel like even though the premiership product might not be good, do you feel like the players are now being impacted by the failing quality? Um, and, you know, they're getting you know, better overseas. South Africa. Well, Maybe? I would say, I would say... The players in England don't have the same relationship with the national team that Irish, Scottish and French players do. There's no doubt about that. All four of us have lived with rugby as a special way. It's not that way anymore. Throw away all your preconceived notions because you have no idea what's coming up next week. You don't know which English club is going to go bust. And you don't know which player is going to play. And, you know, it's like the, it's becoming yeah, so it's extraordinarily difficult. George, I want to piggyback one of Gift's 18 questions that will be edited out. I like them. I did too. Thank you. If you were a 32-year-old back row player who had just finished with the World Cup with your nation, would you follow the, the Franks or the Yen? I, I wouldn't chase the Yen at all, you know. Uh, on on the basis that you you would try, I would imagine, uh, to balance money and your career. So you see a guy like Khaleesi, 
the, the South African captain going to France. Now, now what he's got is he's got big bucks, but his career is also going somewhere. If you go to Japan, you're going to be playing in a pretty Mickey Mouse league where nobody is ever going to see you. Uh, standard, comparatively speaking, pretty average. No, I wouldn't. I, would, I mean, if I was a, a 32-year-old back or forward, I wouldn't be with, with aspirations. Now, if I was in well, New Zealand... it depends Zealand, on what your aspirations are. Yeah, I mean, if Look I... Look at was, Layfield. If I was in New Zealand or South African, 32-year-old back or forward, whose currencies against the mighty dollar, you know, are appalling. Right? It's about 147 yeah. South African watts against the, the dollar, and, and the, so the um, New Zealand dollar is much better. So now I can build my pension scheme. And that's, in effect, what people like Dan Carter did. They they topped up their pension scheme. Yeah. Final question for you, George. I hate look- this game, by the way. You know? <laughs> Just if you're interested. I hate this game. It, no, it, was, it was once a wonderful game. You have no... You've already you, you've already you, you've you've exposed yourself because you said you were going to be watching this weekend with La Roche. Oh no, so I you... said there was a clash with Doris Day, <laughs> Calamity Jane. If she's on, we don't know the schedule just yet, so I'm going to yeah, make some phone calls. The dead mood changes coming on down the line. <laughs> da, 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 da. Howard Keel, how can you miss Howard uh, Keel? Doris you, Day, you can't miss it. All right, when Farrell goes to Rassing. Yeah. Does that allow Mark McCall to finally go back to Ireland? Mark McCall will never go back to Ireland. Really? Neither will Conor O'Shea, uh, who's head of performance at the RFU, formerly head coach of uh, Italy and very successful. Um, no Irish coach abroad will go back to Ireland for what in effect is a poison chalice. Like we some English fella comes in, like who happens to be a Protestant, told her that's not terribly important. Some English fella comes John. in, we welcome him with open arms, and we say, Oh, come on, in me, darling, we'll have you as our coach. And then some Irish guy comes in to be the coach and they say, Ah, I don't think you have it anymore, like a you stand, it's not like the old days. All Irishmen are not prophets in their own land. <laughs> and that's why O'Gara won't come back. O'Gara's more likely to go to England. He's going to break that Ireland. trend. He's coming back, and he's coming back with the red carpet, and he's going to get whatever he wants. Well, if God spares me from this dreaded disease, we'll see. On that note, we want to thank you, Mr. George Huck, for coming back on. Yeah, George Huck. Yeah. Okay, we got to take a break. We'll be right back. cleats you need them tomorrow if you order today by 3 p.m new york time or noon la time they can have them to you tomorrow young old male female if you're playing on turf if you're playing on grass if you're playing in the rain you're playing in the heat they've got you covered rugbynow.com go there now and we're back how great was it having george on again guys i hope he stays alive we need him yeah we need him not you so much man (laughs) Fair enough. Fair enough. Understood. Let's move on and make our picks and make some people some money. Let's go to the European or the Investec Champions Cup. John, what do you like? La Rochelle has lost two games. They're in big trouble. They lost the Stormers at home. They lost to Leinster. No shame in losing either one of those, but they've got to win this week. They're at home against Leicester. I think they win this game, so I'm betting La Rochelle. Ronan O'Garrett, you heard George, he's going to have his eyeballs glued to that one. Gift? I'm looking at Rossing 92 going into Bach. Look, these are two teams that have both very, very awkward wins. I look at Rossing 92, they're getting all the great news, look at them to make the exciting move and to keep it close with Bach. But we know how French teams do on the road. They don't win. But I do it, think they're going to cover the spread. Is it Bath or Bath? You know what? We're we're, we're with the French uh, sedidiness. you damn right. That's sedidiness. Hey, you had Van Damme standing with Stallone one day in Schwarzenegger. They said, hey, let's play the best composers list. Stallone says, I'll be Strauss. 
Van Dam says, I'll be Mozart. Schwarzenegger says, I'll be Bach. <laughs> See, man, that's how you do a good joke. That's how you do a good joke. <laughs> Bam! Bam! <laughs> Boom! The Austrian Oak pronounces it Bach. And if he pronounces it Bach, we pronounce it Bach because that is the Austrian Oak. Bam! How do you keep an idiot in suspense? <laughs> I'll tell you later. So you learned nothing. You learned nothing. You had the blueprint, and then you just threw it away. <laughs> learned nothing. That's right. You learned nothing at all. You learned nothing from anything. It's all right. Well, terrible. what I've learned is I've learned how to make some great picks, and my pick is going to be Toulon and Munster and the over. Stick that up your ass, Layfield. Why would I do that? How do you stick an over up my ass? That makes no sense whatsoever. You'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. Any other picks, guys, in the in the top four in this in this uh, Champions Cup that you like? Because there's a lot of matches. Yeah, I like Bayonne. Bayonne against uh, Northampton. Northampton played a great game last week. Come from behind against Exeter. Bayonne has tied Munster in Munster. Bayonne lost by one point to Glasgow, and they're giving up. They're getting like seventeen or eighteen points. I think it's too many points. I, that I is think a Bayonne lot of points. Keeps it close to this. I don't think Bayonne wins, but I think they keep it closer than that. Gift, is Leinster going to beat Stade Francais in Dublin by 28 and a half points? I mean, unless Stade Francais has absolutely wiped itself out, I mean, I don't feel like it's going to be that. But that being said, Stade Francais is not the same Stade Francais that we saw in the championship series all of three months ago. I do feel like this Stade Francais team is possibly going to still be able to keep it close. Definitely 28 points is too much. I mean, I know France doesn't travel well at all, but this is kind of an embarrassing amount. But it is a lot of points. <laughs> so, you, so Matt, much. you're betting against Talon against Munster. No, I'm betting for the over in that game. Okay, because I'm betting on Munster. Munster's getting seven and a half points. I think Munster wins the game. Munster's got a lot of injuries. They have a lot of problems with their line out, as you saw in that game with Connacht. But I think Munster, they've been playing, they, they got to win. And I think Munster ends up going into France, and I think they win. But I, I would right. sure bet them to cover the seven and a half points. They are the wounded animal. They are on the road. Tough place to play, but they—they, they, you're right. They gotta win. They gotta win. I just said that. I just said they gotta win. All you did was just repeat what I said. You're like a little tape recorder. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tape record another win. I like Connacht upsetting Leon in Leon, despite the. I'll fact take that, that bet. Connacht getting nine and a half points. All right, so you're gonna give me the. You nine know how Connacht, how bad Connacht is on the road. You're gonna give me nine and a half with Connacht. We'll be right back. From New York City comes America's longest running and most popular rugby show. The biggest names in Major League Rugby, MLR highlights, and big match previews. Rugby Wrap Up presents MLR Weekly, made in New York City. Need a great price on a new vehicle? Sheehy makes it easy. Easy Price shows you our lowest prices on the Mid-Atlantic's largest selection. Find your best price online or at any of our 31 dealerships. It's easy at Sheehy. Sheehy.com. Sir, for the U.S. Eagles private issue hat, what's your favorite rugby show? The Rugby Odds. Ding, 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 Thank ding. You. John Linfield sucks. We're back. Give me six now. No, I didn't think so because you're a big. Ooh. You're the one that wants to take the points anytime you get across midfield. Take the points. Take it's the a gambling points. show. We're supposed to take the points or use the points to win money. I'm talking I'm about you to kicking win because money. you're scared to go in the corner because you're not a man. Speaking Gift. of the points, though, look at Bordeaux and Saracens. I know that seven and a half points on any other day, I would say is too much. I think the Saracens are consistently on a downfall. Had a chance to watch your documentary on Amazon Prime, which is so-so. Good semifinals, finals. Look, that's a team that I feel like they used up their best for the championship in 2023. I do feel like this Saracens team, and we've seen it. They've been kind of more disappointing. They've been kind of underwhelming. And almost consistently, they're always going to have at least one person get a yellow card at the most primary moment. Oftentimes, it's been Maro Toji like it was last week losing it at the most important time. 
that seven and a half points is not looking as crazy to me as it would be on any other year. You know, and it was Morrow and Toji got the yellow card down in Africa in the first game they lose. Uh, you know, and, and I, I love Morrow. I think he's one of the best players in rugby. But, you know, it's just there's something about the team. They seem snake bit. I mean, they seem snake bit when it gets to winning big games. I, I still think they're a great team. And Morrow Toji, to me, is that, that guy is pure, pure, pure class. Right. They're snake bit somehow. I, I agree the show, the Mario Toje show with John and Gif kissing Mario Toje's ass. Hey, now your life, man. I recognize my, my Nigerian brother, even if I make fun of his accent, but I'm recognizing my Nigerian brother. I didn't make fun of his accent. But why are you bashing Mario him. Toji? I just said you two are kiss asses. Now let's go on to our but picks. This of the is week. a rugby show. We're talking about great players, and we're talking about how great Mario Toji is, and he is great. You, you need us to move it along? Oh, okay, we're going to move it along. We have to go to the picks of the week. John. I don't have one because I was really? Bayonne. John. My pick of the week is Stormers against Sale. I, look, Sale is a solid club, but it, it, it's hard for them to try. They played in Cape Verde, take them play halfway. I think I might take Sale, but they're playing down in Cape Town. Stormers are a different team down there. Stormers beat La Rochelle earlier. I, they've lost to one game. Give me Stormers to win this game in Cape Town versus Sale. I'm not going to comment because you don't want my comments. Correct. <laughs> Gift. <laughs> hey, look, I think one game that people are not going to recognize uh, simply because the title, the team seem very mismatched, but it's the Wild Knights versus the Dino Bars. Dino Bars played a really tight game against the Cannon Eagles last week. A much better game than I've seen them before. There might be midway through the standings, but... I actually look at these Dino Bars to put a little bit of a pressure on the Wild Knights. Wild Knights be tripping in the first halves. They be they, they. I think they're getting a little cocky of themselves. But look for the Dino Bars to barely lose, barely lose to the Wild Knights next week. All right, so we've got Bath and Dino Bars, which are Bath and Dino Bores translated, ladies and gentlemen, just in case you're trying to. I said what I said. I said, I don't Americanize it for me. All right. No. I'm trying to work within the language base. <laughs> I'm not Americanizing it. It's dino bores and bath. You're trying to Americanize it. And you claim to be from Ireland like you, like you speak English or something? I'm not Americanizing it, you idiot. Come on. It's, it's <laughs> dino bores. It's a bore, not a bars. bar. And it's Bore. bath, Ever. not bath. <laughs> it is a bath. See? J.J. No would say dino no bath. I'm doubling down with my Kubota Spears, and Classy they're going to take here. it to the Classy. Kobe Steel. That's right. I got I got my my Spears versus the Steel. On that note, I want to thank you guys because we're out of time. Thanks to John Bradshaw, Layfield, the WWE Hall of Fame Return Rugby Advocate. Thank you to Gifte Bailu, the King Gifte Bailu, inventor of words. Thanks to George Hook, the Irish rugby legend. Thank you for tuning in. Please check out our other programs, including MLR Weekly, the College Rugby Wrap-Up. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Sign up for our weekly newsletter. And please join our American Red Cross Blood Donor team. It's like a yard sale. They're the freaking yellow pages you're reading. <laughs>